Hi there! In previous videos we successfully created working environment and created all needed artifacts. Now let's move to the next step and try whether we can calculate some dummy metrics, log it into our database and finally access those data through Grafana. Let's get down to it. As you can see from my screen, I stopped my Docker container using command docker compose down and now I'm going to create Python script in order to generate some dummy metrics and load it to our database. Let's do that. So I created a script called dummy metrics calculation.py for calculation some dummy metrics. Let's start from importing a couple of libraries and then create the structure for our script. Basically what we want to do here is to write a function to create a database, to create a table and then write a function which adds some metrics row by row. Later we are going to create a cycle from where we are going to run this metric calculation script and with some time delay load it into our database. I will start from a couple of imports, libraries to calculate um, random values, library for logging and a couple of technical libraries. So let's do that. I'm gonna need date time because I want to log some date time information into our my table. I'm gonna need time. I'm gonna need random to generate random values for my variables. Logging in order to show something in my terminal what tells UUID. You will see why. I like to specify my time zone, so I will import py time zone pandas data frame so let's let's import it for just in case and they might want to write something into file system so i will import my o hopefully that's it i believe so let's try to work with what you have if you're gonna need something else we will add it later what i want to do is specify the login option and then move to the creation of database together with the table so i will start from login and I will use base config. Now I need to specify how I want to log my data. Yeah, let it be something like time, level and message. Now let me create a couple of global variables. I want to create sending data timeout and initialize a random generator. Now let me write function to prepare my database. What I'm gonna do there is first of all check whether my test database is, exists. If it exists, then well, I will move to creation of the table. If not, I first create database and then create a table. For access to database, I'm gonna use psycopg, so let's actually import this library. So now let's create the function. Now let's discuss what we just wrote. So basically we accessed our database with help of connect. Here we specified the address, host, port, user and password. You can double check it in your Docker Compose to make sure that all is correct right there. We just executed this following uh, SQL query. Select one from uh, Postgres database where uh, date name is equal to test. So the database name is equal to test. Then we checked the size of our result. If the size is equal to zero, basically it means that it returned nothing and there is no database. So we create database test in this case. So if it exists, we can move on and create table. Let's do that. Let's take a look at this statement. Basically, we just created one more connection. So now we connect it to database test using the user Postgres and the same password. And now we need to create our table. In order to create table, we need to come up with table name and scheme and then execute this query. It will be pretty long, so I suggest us to create this statement separately. Let's quickly go up in our script and do that. I will call it create table statement.
Now let's take a look to our statement. First of all, we try to drop table if it exists, because every time we start over the work, we prefer to have an empty table. Later, we create a table which we called dummy matrix, because there is only dummy matrix presented here. And we started from the timestamp. Then we created three more columns. It's value 1, value 2, and value 3, in order to play around with values with different types, integer, varchar, and float. Here it is. So now we can go back to our prepdb function and use this createDB statement in our connection execute. So let's specify it here. Basically, that's it. So that's our preparation function. And now we can implement function which will calculate some values to our value 1, value 3, value 2. Basically, you can come up with more informative names if you want and load this data uh, into our table. So let's create another function and let's call it calculate dummy matrix PostgreSQL. We'll use car parameter here because we are going to insert values into the specific position of the cursor, so this will be the argument of this function. So let's keep it here. Now let's come up with some ideas of how we can calculate random values. That should be pretty simple. So that's how we're going to calculate values, just random integer from 0 to 100. Uh, UUID string and random value. So now let's create a statement to insert those values into our table. Looks like okay. So what we did here, we executed the query inside into dummy matrix table, which we created before for values. It's timestamp, value one, two, and three, all in string format. And what we insert is now the time I use time zone Europe London. You can use other time zones as well. And all this calculated three values. Basically, that's it. So all the rest we need to do is create a cycle where we are going to iterate a limited number of times and just write down all these values into our table. Let's do that. I suggest us do it inside of main function and then just run main. So time to define main finally. And we start from calling prep db function. Now let's take a look at this part of our function. What we just created. We prepared our database. Uh, we calculated time of the last send, approximately. So then we created a connection to our database using the same credentials. And then we just created a sem simple function with 100 iterations. And at each iteration, what we're going to do is use cursor for inserting data into our table. So how we do that is help of calculate dummy metric PostgreSQL function. So we just used this cursor as an argument which we just created. So basically that's the main part. So now let's calculate how much time should we wait in order to simulate the real production usage uh, with our batch model, which uh, outputs some values each 10 seconds. So in order to have some gap between our values and be able to observe pretty nice visuals in our Grafana later. With some time out, it will be a bit better to, visual, to analyze it visually. Let me add this time delta calculation. Let's take a look at what we just added now. So we estimated new send date time, which is equal to now. Then we estimated how much time has elapsed since uh, our last send, basically, which is new send minus last send in seconds. Then we compared this amount of time with sending timeout. And if it's not enough, if it's less than our timeout, we just wait for the rest time. Later, update our last send and uh, log in for that this batch of data has been sent. That's basically it. That's enough to test our approach. 
So now let's uh, add in main statement in the closing one and test our script. Here we are. Let's go back to the terminal and check whether we are able to prepare a database and send some dummy metrics to our table. Let's test our script. But prior to that, let's activate our services with help of Docker Compose. And if you want to rebuild your services, you can use parameter build. And now let's test our script. So I write Python dummy metrics calculation. So we can see that the first part of data has been sent. Let's wait for a while. So I want to see a couple of more lines that data has been sent. OK. So now let's go to browser and take a look at our database. As you remember, we have Adminer for that. So let's open up our database. We have PostgreSQL, server DB, uh, username is equal to Postgres, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's correct. Password is example for me. And database is test. So let's log in and see what we have here. There is a table, dummy metrics, which is good. This is the scheme of the table. And we can select some data and we see that we have quite a lot already. Here is a timestamp, value 1, value 2 and value 3. Looks quite good. So now let's go to Grafana and see whether we are able to access those data from Grafana. If we configured our Grafana and PostgreSQL correctly, we should be able to create new dashboard. Let's log into Grafana again. Okay, that's simple. Here is no dashboard, so let's create one and add new panel. Here we can see the example of panel, which is auto-generated, but we need to choose our data source, which is PostgreSQL. Here we have some query constructor where uh, our data table is already selected, right? So we can select value. For example, let's select value 1 and yeah, it's, it's, it's right here. So we can see the preview of our plot. What you can do here is, for example, change the last six hours to last five minutes so we can observe more of our data. Maybe add some description or change panel name. Let's just create that it's our dummy metric here. We can hit button update, apply. And here you can see our panel. So it looks pretty nicely. In Grafana, you can customize your dashboard. So you can, for example, add more panels here. OK, let me hit this button again. And maybe it's a bit better to add panel from here. So you can, for example, move them. So select some data. For example, let's now select value 3 and call it dummy value 3. Maybe you want to change the color here. Violet, for example. Oh, it's, it's not. It's threshold, right? So we need to figure out where to change this color in the interface. So let's just do it from here. Again, hit the button apply and here is your pretty straightforward dashboard. So basically now we are sure that we correctly created all the configuration files so we can actually access our database, load data here and build some dashboard from Grafana. That's it for this video. In the next video, we are going to create actual meaningful dashboard with some drift metrics and many other metrics from Evidently.